Now, in this problem, uh, we are given that a skateboarder on a ramp is accelerated by a known zero net force. Now, we are given with four statements and we need to tell whether the given statements are always true, never true or sometimes true. So, first statement that we are given is the skateboarder is moving in the direction of net force. Now, the statement one, it can be true sometimes. Now, uh, from the Newton's second law of motion, we know that the direction of acceleration is always in the direction of net force, but the acceleration does not always point in the direction of motion. So, yes, it can be possible, it cannot be possible. So, sometimes true. For the V part, it says the acceleration of a skateboarder is at the right angle to the net force. This is completely false, never true. So we can write never true because from the Newton's second law of motion, the acceleration is always in the direction of net force. Now next, the C part, it says the acceleration of a skateboarder is in the direction of net force. Yeah, that's true and always true. And finally, we have uh, the skateboarder is instantaneously at rest. It can be sometimes true. Let me explain why. This case will be true when the net force opposes the motion such that it reduces the instantaneous velocity zero. Suppose the motion of, of the skateboarder is in the upward direction and the net force is in the downward direction. Then a point will come when the instantaneous velocity goes to zero. And when the instantaneous velocity is zero, the particle would be at rest. So this can be true in, in some cases, otherwise uh, it may not be true. So sometimes true, sometimes false. Now in this question, uh, we are given that a farm tractor tows 3300 kg trailer up a 14 degree incline. So this is 14 degree incline and this is the trailer. Now uh, the mass for the trailer is 3300 kgs and it is moving with a steady speed of 2.8 meter per second. Now we need to find the force does the tractor exerts on the trailer. So this will be the force that the tractor exerts on the trailer and this direction I'm taking the positive x. This is the positive y. Now if you draw the free body diagram, this is the weight force acting in the vertically downward direction w which is equals to mg. And if you take its component in the x and y direction, so this is along the y direction and this is along the x direction. This is we can write wx and this we can write wy. Now since the, the object is moving with a constant velocity, that means the acceleration is zero or we can say that the net force acting on the body is zero from the Newton's second law of motion. So net force in the x direction we have uh, f minus wx this is equals to zero so from here f will be equals to wx and wx we have uh, if this angle is 14 degree so this angle will also be 14 degree so wx will be mg sine 14 degree right so mg sine 14 degree now we have all the values we can put it here so this is uh, m we have three three double zero kgs g is constant its value is 9.81 meter per second squared sine 14 degree on further solving we'll get this value to be 7.8 kilo newton so this is the force exerted by the tractor on the trailer now if you have any confusion that how this angle if this angle is 14 degree and how this angle is also 14 degree you can uh, see my previous video where i have uh, explained this concept in detail now in this question we are given that two crewmen are pulling raft through a lock that you can see in this figure one crewman pulls with a force of 130 newton at an angle 34 degrees relative to the forward direction this one let this direction be the x let this direction be the y now the second crewman uh, pulls with a force f at an angle 45 degrees now our aim is to find 
that with what force should the second crewman pulls so that the net force of the two crewman in the forward direction so what is basically the question is saying that we want that the net force on the crewman is in the forward direction in this direction so basically what we can say that the net forces in the y direction should be equals to zero then only the net forces will be along the x-axis right so let this force be f1 and this force be f2 now uh, the component of the first force in the y direction this will be minus f1 sine 34 degrees we have taken negative because it is along the negative y then the component of the second force along the y direction this will be f2 sine 45 degrees now net force in the y direction this is equals to f2 sine 45 degrees minus f1 uh, sine 34 degrees and is equals to 0 now from here f2 this will be equals to f1 sine 34 degrees divided by sine 45 now you can put the values f1 we have uh, 130 newton times sine 34 degrees divided by sine 45 and on further solving you will get the value of f2 to be equals to uh, 102.8 newton which can be taken as 100 newton or 0 0.10 kilo newton so with this force the second crewman should pull so that the net force of the two crewman is in the forward direction now in this problem we are given that to give a 19 kg child a ride two teenagers these are two teenagers that pulls 3.7 kg sled this is sled now both teenager pulls with a force of 55 newton at an angle 35 degrees relative to the forward direction this is the forward direction and also snow exerts a retarding force of 57 newton on the sled now we need to find the acceleration of the child and the sled so uh, first we're going to make the free body diagram of the sled and the child since the child is on the sled so we can assume it to be one object so mass of the this object to be equals to 19 plus 2.7 kg sorry 3.7 kg which is equals to 22.7 kgs so weight force would be in the downward direction w equals to mg the snow exerts a normal force on the sled n and the friction force is in the backward direction 57 newton and two forces are acting this one this is 55 newton and this is also 55 newton and this angle is 35 degrees now there is no motion in the vertical direction so the net forces in the vertical direction will be balanced next in the uh, horizontal direction so this direction will be taking positive x now uh, to find the acceleration we're going to use the newton's second law of motion and from the newton's second law of motion a we have sigma fx this is along the x direction divided by the mass now in the x direction uh, there are three forces 55 newton 50, this is also 55 newton and this is 57 newton and this direction we have taken positive so uh, the component of this force in the horizontal direction this will be 55 cosine 35 plus this is 55 cosine 35 then this is uh, along the negative uh, x so we can write minus 55 so this is the net force in the x direction now we can put all these value here so ax this would be uh, 2 times 55 cosine 35 degrees minus 55 divided by the mass is 22.7 kgs you can use your calculator and from here the value of uh, acceleration comes out to be as 1.5 meter per second square so this will be the acceleration of the child and the slit now in this question uh, we are given that an object is acted upon by three forces and it moves with a constant velocity now one force is acting on the object in a positive x direction so let 
the object be represented with a point object. So one force is along the positive x direction, let it be F1 and its magnitude we have 6.5 Newton. Now the second force has a magnitude of 4.4 Newton and it points along the negative y direction. So this is F2 and its magnitude we have 4.4 Newton. Now we need to find the magnitude and the direction of the third force. Now here it is clearly written in the equation that the object moves with a constant velocity. It's a very important term here. Constant velocity means the acceleration will be zero. And if acceleration is zero, from the Newton's second law of motion, we can write that the net force acting on the object will be equals to zero. So net forces we have F1 plus F2. The third force, let it be F3. So some of these forces will be zero. So let me put all these value here. So F1 plus F2 plus F3, this will be equals to zero. Now F1 we have 6.5 Newton and it's along the uh, X direction. So in vector form we can write 6.5 Newton X cap. F2 we have 4.4 uh, Newton along the negative Y. So we can write minus 4.4 Newton Y cap plus F3 is equals to zero. Now from here F3 this will be equals to uh, negative 6.5 Newton X cap plus 4.4 Newton Y cap. So this is the required third force. Now we need to find the direction and the magnitude. Now let me first uh, represent this force on the diagram. So it have a uh, X component and the negative X. So the X component is negative. So this will be the X component and Y component is positive. So this will be the Y component. This is Fy and this is Fx. So F3 force would be in this direction. This will be F3. Now let's find the angle theta. This angle theta. So this theta would be tangent inverse. The Y component of the force which is 4.4 uh, Newton divided by the X component is uh, 6.5 Newton. So that comes out to be as 34 degrees but generally we measure the angle theta from the positive x so this theta x this would be equals to uh, this 180 degrees this whole angle is 180 degrees so 180 minus this 34 which is equals to 146 degrees so this is the direction of the f3 force this is basically from the positive x axis next the magnitude of the f3 force this will be equals to under root the x component square plus the y component square. So x component we have 6.5 and its whole square. This negative sign is there. Plus the y component we have 4.4 and its whole square. And on solving, we'll get this value to be 7.8 Newton. Now this question will be the last question of this video. And here this question seems to be very big, but it's a very easy question. It says that the force exerted by the sun on the moon has a magnitude of 4.34 times 10 to the power 20 Newton and the force exerted by the earth on the moon has a magnitude of 1.98 times 10 to the power 20 Newton that you can see in this image also. Now in the A and the B part we need to find the direction and the magnitude of the net force acting on the moon. So the net force acting on the moon this will be the force exerted on the moon by the sun plus the force exerted on the on the moon by the earth so this value we have 4.34 times 10 to the power 20 newton and it's along the x direction so unit vector x cap plus the force exerted by the earth on the moon we have 1.98 times 10 to the power 20 newton and it's along the y direction so y cap now from the concepts that we studied in the vector addition, we know that the net force would be along this direction and this angle theta. This will be equals to the tangent inverse, the y component over the x component. y component we have 1.98 times 10 to the power 20 and the x component we have 4.34 times 10 to the power 20. This is sigma f net. Now uh, from here theta comes out to be as 
24.5 degrees. This is above x axis, positive x axis, this angle. Now, next uh, we have to find its magnitude. Now, magnitude is very simple uh, magnitude of the net force, F net. This is equals to under root the x component square plus the y component square. X component we have 4.34 times 10 to the power 20 and its whole square plus 1.98 times 10 to the power 20 and its whole square. Now on further solving we will get the magnitude to be 4.77 times 10 to the power 20 Newton. So this is the magnitude. Uh, now next uh, we need to find the acceleration of the moon given that the mass of the moon is 7.35 times 10 to the power 22 Newton. Now uh, from the Newton's second law of motion we can write that the acceleration of any object is equal to the net force acting on it divided by the mass of object. So net force we have 4.77 times 10 to the power 20 Newton and the mass we have 7.35 times 10 to the power 22 kgs. Now uh, simplifying this by using our calculator, you'll get the acceleration to be 0 0.00649 meter per second squared. So this will be the acceleration of the moon and the direction will be same as the direction of net force. So this is all with this video. In the next video, we'll see a few more questions uh, from the chapter 5, the Newton's laws of motion.